brought to you by 1Password. Whether you're a longtime Apple enthusiast or you are just making the switch, this video is gonna serve as your ultimate guide to setting up your brand new Mac. From first time setup to unlocking all the advanced features that the Mac can offer, I'll walk you through each step and share really my own tips and tricks how to enhance your Mac experience and get the most out of it. So grab your Mac, I've got the 16 inch MacBook Pro right here and let's unlock the potential of your device together. So you have a brand new Mac and you wanna set up to get the most out of it. Well, you are in the right place because today we're gonna to set up my brand new M3 Max MacBook Pro. So if you wanna grab your computer, we are gonna get started here. Now, I do have timestamps to all the different sections we're gonna be going through here to my left. So if you wanna navigate around, you're more than welcome to. So let's get right into it. So the very first thing we have here is for accessibility and accessibility allows your Mac to adapt to any special needs that you may have at the individual level. I fortunately do not have any special needs. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose not now. I'm gonna connect to my Wi-Fi. Now, whether you're coming from a Windows or a Mac computer, one thing I definitely consider is using Migration Assistant to set up your new Mac. Now, this tool is built into Mac OS and it really takes out the friction, allowing you to transfer your data, the applications, your user settings from one computer to your new Mac. So today, even though we're not going to use it now, you can always come back to it and transfer over your documents, your apps, your user accounts, so we can return to it anytime. Now, the very first line of defense on your computer is making sure that you have a strong password and I would also suggest adding a two-factor authentication mechanism, such as a hardware security key for signing into your Apple ID. This greatly enhances your Apple ID account security for a few different reasons. And with a hardware security key, even if someone has your password, they cannot access your account without having access to the physical key. The keys themselves are relatively inexpensive. They're about 50 bucks usually per key, and you do need two of them to set them up with the first time on your Apple ID. Now, staying on the topic of security, let's hear from today's video sponsor, which is 1Password. 1Password is an app that simplifies your digital life by securely storing and autofilling all of your passwords, making logging in on your Mac, your iPhone, your iPad, any other device, it doesn't really matter what it is, Windows, Linux, it doesn't matter, there is an app for it. Now, it offers enhanced security by protecting your sensitive information with industry standard encryption, ensuring that your data remains safe from breaches and hacks. Now, your passwords are available on every device, like I mentioned, and that's thanks to industry-leading seamless cross-device sync. Now, the new year is the best time for you to review your password policies and how you're taking care of your password. Make sure that you have good password hygiene. You can learn more about 1Password by visiting the first link in the video description, and I wanna thank 1Password for sponsoring today's video. Now we're at the point where the Mac is asking us to customize the services for our Mac. These include location services, data analytics, so sharing information with, with Apple or developers, app analytics, how Siri is gonna work, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna allow the Mac to stay as such, which I think for the most part, they are defaulted as on. And then what we'll do is later on, we'll customize those just a little bit more granularly later on in the setup. I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. Now I love Touch ID because it is a very easy way of authenticating into my Mac, whether I'm opening it, uh, whether I'm unlocking an app, whether I'm making a purchase, it's just super simple and I choose to use this on. Now I authenticate both my left and my right finger depending on which side my Mac is. I wanna use that uh, as easily as I can. Now let's talk about some useful keyboard shortcuts that you need to know in order to master your Mac. First, I think the obvious one is gonna be command space. Command space is gonna open up spotlight search to find anything that is on your Mac, documents, files, music, you can do system controls, all that is gonna be enabled when you hit command space on your keyboard to open it up. Next, if you wanna open up emojis, you can hit the globe key in the bottom left-hand corner of your keyboard, it has a function key on it as well, or if you don't have the globe key for your, or you're using a third-party keyboard like I do sometimes, hit control, command, space, and that will open up the emoji picker anywhere on the Mac. Hit command W to close finder windows, browser windows like Safari, Chrome, Brave, and application windows like Pages, Word, Mail, etc. You can hit Command-Q to quit any application. And pro tip, if you want to close an application and keep the windows, you hit Command, hold down the Option key, which is right next to it, to the left, and then Q. In any web browser, you can hit Command-L to jump to the URL bar and quickly type in the URL of the website you want to go to. And you can hit Command-T to open up a new tab in Finder, browser windows like Safari, Chrome, Brave, and application windows like Pages, Word, Mail, etc. And if you are enjoying today's video like I think you are and you wanna get more content like this, consider hitting subscribe, maybe even hit the like button so YouTube knows that this is a valuable video to other people like you and me who might enjoy this content. 
Now, let's get back to our Mac. Now that we have our Mac initialized, I have some features for you to go ahead and change which will really make your Mac yours. First, it's gonna be notifications. First, go to system settings and let's turn off notifications for apps that we have installed either on our iPhone or iPad to reduce any duplicate notifications. Next, we're gonna go to general and we're gonna go to about and that very first line shows the name of your computer and you really wanna customize this. Uh, I like Greek mythology and I name all of my computers, all my devices on my network are named after some mythical Greek mythology or even Roman mythology character. This, my computer here is Prometheus. But the reason why you wanna customize the name of your Mac or the name of your computers is because when you're doing file sharing, airdrop, you at least can see the name of the computer that you're broadcasting to or from. It does come in handy, especially when we're talking about file sharing, which I'll go into more in just a moment. Now, file sharing is the next feature that we wanna go ahead and change. And we're gonna go down here in general, we're gonna to go to sharing and that very first radio button or the very first button, you wanna go ahead and click, turn that on. And you have the ability to share files to and from your Mac from really any device on your network. Now, if you only have just a Mac, then maybe it's something you don't wanna turn on. But if you have an iPhone, an iPad, another Mac, if you have other computers on your network, you can turn this on and you can actually configure it, which we'll talk about here in just a few minutes, how to configure your devices to reach your Mac. Following up on that, we're gonna to go to general, we're gonna software updates, and I'm gonna check for if there's any software updates pending for my device. These devices have come from the factory with older software versions, and you just wanna make sure that you are running the most recent version of software that is applicable for your Mac. Next, I'm gonna to go to system settings, and I'm gonna to go to appearance. I'm gonna to go to sidebar icon size, and I'm gonna change it to large because I like seeing large icons. Staying in the appearance pane, I'm gonna to go to allow window tinting, and I'm gonna choose that to be enabled. I'm also gonna go ahead and choose show scroll bars, Next, I'm going to of accessibility. We're going to go down to live captions, which is in the hearing section, and we're going to turn on in-app live captions for FaceTime. This way, when I'm talking to someone, I can not only see what they're saying, right? I can also hear them and get the caption text. I don't know, maybe I'm getting old and I just like reading captions. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, but I like having this feature turned on. Stay in accessibility. I'm going to go to pointer control. I'm going to go to trackpad options. I'm going to go to use trackpad for dragging, and then I'm going to choose three finger dragging. This allows me to go ahead and use my trackpad with three fingers to drag any window. Staying in system settings, I'm gonna to go to the control center and here you can customize what services and what icons you see in control center. But pro tip, you can open the control center and drag the icon that you wanna see right to the menu bar and it'll always be visible. Next, I'm gonna to go to Siri and Spotlight. And here you can say what the voice is that you wanna hear for your Siri commands, whether you want Siri to respond to, hey, or just their name. Uh, you can say how you want to turn it on or if you want to turn it on using a keyboard shortcut. And you can say what are the different uh, features that you want to have enabled in Spotlight Search. Going down to desktop and dock, I'm going to go to dock position. And here you have the choice between left, right, or bottom center. And clearly the only option here is going to be the bottom. And if you choose left or right, I don't know if we can be friends, but let's move on. I'm going to choose to automatically hide the dock, make sure that's enabled. I'm gonna to choose to show indicators for open applications. This is gonna show a white or a dark circle underneath the app icon, letting me know that that app is open. I'm gonna to go to disable show recent and suggested apps and make sure that's not shown on the dock because I'd like my dock nice and tidy. I'm gonna change click to reveal wallpaper, make sure it's only in stage manager. In the widget section, I'm gonna change my widget style to make sure that they're in full color and that they're monochrome and that I have my iPhone widgets being shown. You can also select your default web browser. I'm using Safari, but you can choose anything that you'd like to. Next, I'm gonna to go to Windows. I'm gonna select Ask to Keep Changes when closing Windows. I'm gonna make sure that's enabled, as well as Close Windows when quitting an application. Next, I'm gonna to go to Hot Corners, and here you can set up quick actions that are triggered whenever the mouse moves into the appropriate corner. You can choose anything from the menu that's above, but pro tip, you can reduce the likeliness of mistakenly enabling Hot Corner by holding down one of the keyboard modifiers during the setup. And the keyboard modifiers are Control, Option, and Command. So instead of going to the bottom right-hand corner to sleep your display, you can hold down the Command key, then go to the right-hand corner to sleep your display. Speaking of displays, I'm gonna turn off True Tone. True Tone is a feature that adjusts the color temperature of your screen based on the ambient lighting of your room. For me, as someone who edits photos, edits videos, it's not something that I want on, but I bet you 95% of the people watching this video will find value in it. Next, I'm gonna to go to battery, and if you're sensitive to battery life or your battery performance, you can configure your Mac to reduce energy consumption when you are on battery and by enabling low power mode. Now, if you don't see this option available, it's either not available for the Mac that you have, or you might be using a desktop. I'm gonna to go to Touch ID. I'm gonna make sure that I'm turning on Apple Watch Unlock. I can use my Apple Watch to unlock my Mac. Don't need to press the Touch ID button. 
I can also authenticate if my Mac lid is closed with my Apple Watch, which is a real time saver as well. And I do like to use a third party keyboard so I don't have to worry about using a keyboard with uh, Touch ID. Next, I'm gonna go to keyboard. I'm gonna go to text replacements and here I make sure that all my favorite text replacements are set up. And pro tip, you can create text shortcuts for anything from your phone number, your email address. I even have one set up for my journal, which I'll paste down in the comments below. Now the next three options are related to the trackpad. I'm gonna go to the trackpad, turn on, tap to click. I'm gonna also turn on look up and data detectors, make sure that's enabled. And I'm gonna swipe between pages using three fingers. This allows me to navigate pages uh, using three fingers for back and forth navigation. Now, next we wanna go down to location services in privacy and security. And in location services, these are all the different apps and services that have access to our location when we're using our Mac. Now, maybe you have a stationary Mac, maybe you have a uh, Mac Pro that you take out of the house, but you wanna make sure that you have, I would say the least number of services that are using your location and by only what's necessary. Now on my computer, I have calendar, which makes sense. If I need to leave to go somewhere, it's gonna give me a calendar alert. Uh, I have Find My turned on, I have Safari turned on, Siri Dictation, and that is really about it. If you have other services that you wanna turn off, all you gotta do is click it off, and you can always come back to this space to turn on or turn off services at a later point in time. Now, if we click on the more details under System Services, we can see that these are all the system services that are using your location when you're using your Mac. I leave all these on and I don't necessarily change them. And I also have significant locations turned on where anytime that my Mac is logging a location that I've been at, either a number of times consecutively or for a long period of time, it logs that as a significant location. Significant locations are used to predict you know, travel time, things of that nature when you are using your Mac in a different location. So I use all of these, uh, I leave them all turned on and you might wanna consider leaving them on as well because I don't wanna have any kind of degradation or poor service experience with my Mac and Mac OS. Now next we're gonna go into passwords and for passwords I leave this feature, I would say largely turned off, I don't wanna use passwords from iCloud Keychain because I use one password uh, so deeply and I'm very integrated into it. Uh, I don't use uh, the autofill password, actually that should be turned off, but I do have cleanup verification codes turned on. So if uh, I get a verification code from service via SMS, it does send it to my Mac via messages and messages will automatically clean it up on both devices. So that is a local feature that you would need to enable on your Mac and also on your iPhone if you have it on there as well. And what I'm gonna do next here is I'm gonna perfect my dock in a way that is congruent to the way that I use my Mac. So I don't necessarily need all these applications that are in the Mac uh, dock, simply by right-clicking on the app, going to options, going to remove from dock. And I'm gonna prune these apps one by one until I get my dock the way that I want. And now I have my dock in a very clean place after I've removed a majority of the apps that were in there from the first party installation or from the initial installation. Now, pro tip, if you wanted to, you could click on your dock and drag up and drag down to change the size of this very easily. Now here, this is my download folder and this is my trash folder, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Finder here and I'm gonna take applications and I'm gonna drag that down here. I'm gonna put my application folder right into my dock. Let's customize Finder. I've got it open. I'm gonna remove Recents from the sidebar because I never use Recents and actually I don't find it very helpful at all. I'm gonna click on Finder. I'm gonna to go to Settings and show these items on your desktop. I wanna show my hard disk and I wanna show connected servers since I have a server cache here behind me. And I wanna see my Movies folder, my Music folder, and my Pictures folder, and actually my Home folder as well. Uh, and that's gonna show all of these different folders here in the sidebar. Movies is where I store all my projects. Music is where I store my music, obviously. Pictures is where I store my picture library or my photos library and home gives me a little bit better navigation. Click on new finder window shows instead of recents. I'm going to click on other and I'm going to show movies. That's usually where I start my search. Tags I'm going to turn off since I never use tags. And if you use tags, let me know how you're using them down below because I can't really find a good way how to use tags. I don't want to choose file name extensions or I don't want to show file name extensions. And I want to keep folders on top when Windows when sorting by name, as well as on the desktop. And then lastly, I wanna choose when performing a search, I wanna search the current folder because that's how I search. I go to the folder and then I look for something. The way that it's organized at first doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. So if I have my iPhone in my hand, let's say I go to files and I'm gonna to go to here in the top right hand corner, I'm gonna to go to connect a server. We get the ability to type in a server address. So I'm gonna type in that same address, it's SMB forward slash forward slash or actually backslash backslash and it's going to be 
4.20. Now this is a private IP address. What that means is it's not reachable from outside of your house. So you would not be able to uh, connect this if you were outside your house on a local network or sorry, on the macro network or on a Wi-Fi network outside your house. And there we go. So now I'm connected to this computer here, my folder, and here's the exact same folder that I have. Now this is actually really useful. I wanna transfer some type of content from my iPhone to my computer or vice versa. Maybe I'm looking for a document. Uh, maybe I'm looking for like here, quick and file. I'm looking for an invoice. All right, that wraps it up for the ultimate Mac setup for 2024 with several tips and tricks for you to be more productive on your Mac. Now, if you are interested in learning more about my ultimate dream setup, which is my desk, which is right behind me here, I do have a video which will be linked in the cards here. Otherwise, YouTube and the algorithm pick out a video for you here. My name is Mike, and I hope that you are subscribed because I have more content coming your way. We'll talk to you in the new year.